almost in our, in our DNA, in, in grain, this love for making things. Mud, clay, and you have a wheel, very simple thing. And you, you fire it, and that's pottery. But in that spectrum, there's so many different aspects of it to, to master. That's the nice thing about it, is you, you know, you're always learning about yourself as well. There's something quite perverse about making pots. I mean, in, in, in our society, studio potters work in a really primitive way, almost in an unproductive way. All the things that we make, you can make by the thousands at the same time. There is no reason for it, practically, economically, but people still do it. Every process that you do, you have to really apply yourself to it to get it right, because right from the start, from when the clay comes out of the earth, it has to follow a kind of process, otherwise it won't work. You'll, you'll encounter problems. So you have to master the clay, what is in the clay, and then how to prepare the clay. Through when, you, when you're making the pots, when they're drying and when they're firing, there's all these things that, that can go wrong along the way. You're accounting for every step in the process, to making sure it's right and to go through that cycle in the most efficient, gracious way. For me, it's almost unthinkable to allow somebody else in the process. Pattern is, is fascinating to me because it's so ancient. It's kind of the first marks of intelligence, of self-awareness. In the early history of ceramics, you find these geometric patterns all over the world. I think it's enormously seductive to our minds. But then there's patterns in nature as well, and it's in, in maths, in, in geometry, everything. It, you know, it's, almost like, it's almost like a kind of magic. Once you've made a pot and you've shaped it and if you've decorated it, you have to finish it by firing. It's the most important part of the process, you know, it goes in the kiln and then you have to endure a long while. Everything you've put into it is now being tested and the result is it's now happening but you can't see it. You can't open the door of the kiln to destroy the pot and, you know, <laughs> it'll destroy you as well. You, you've got to wait from about 1,000 degrees up to 1,280 degrees, roughly. It starts getting interesting. Glaze is melting over your decoration, you know. It's, it's kind of almost like you're drawing in the sand on a beach and the sea comes in and just washes it away and changes it. You open the kiln, you know, what's, what's there is the fruits of your labour, you know, what, what you've made. 
if you're lucky, it works, you know, it's, it's all come together. You've taken all that time that you've spent and you've frozen it in this one thing of beauty. You've made something beautiful. My occupation brought me here. It's a long story, though. It's kind of a happy story. Although there's still influence of my African past in the work, I think it's, it's become more about this place, you know, where I live now. I ended up here and I'm doing a thing I, that I love doing. Yeah.